Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Cummins and I'm a historical researcher and I research Japan and one of my core aims is to try and correct uh, the inaccuracies we have about Japanese martial history. So this one and what I want to talk to you about today is karate. Now karate is absolutely Japanese isn't it? It's like the guys dressed in white, they're Japanese, they stand in rows and they're very you know strong stances and hard slamming of feet. Well what I want to say to you today is actually no, Japanese karate is not Japanese. In fact karate is not Japanese at all. But you're like what? Now many people actually know this, many people in the martial arts world do know this but if you're new to karate or you've done it for a long time but not really studied the history then I want you to know that no, karate does not come from Japan. Now what I want to do is show you where Okinawa is. I'm going to show you a picture now of where Okinawa is. Now that's halfway between China and Japan thereabouts and originally it was an independent island and uh, with you know massive trading connections with China and things like that. And of course its political history changed throughout all of history. However, um, what happened there is they developed uh, through different influences through trade and China and things like that. They invented something called Tei which is um, the origins of karate, the, the, you know Tei. Now this was an Okinawan martial art, it was very much of Chinese influence and uh, it was not practiced in Japan, you know, not wholly anyway. Maybe people had travelled there and travelled back, maybe somebody learned it there. But all, my point is, is, as the samurai culture, they did not practice tei. The samurai culture practiced something called kumiuchi and yawara and possibly taijutsu and things like that. So uh, before they even invented, or not invented, before they used the term jujitsu, which is probably around the mid 1700s or early 1700s. But again, you know, nobody's actually pinned down the exact date that came in. So what you've got to remember now is you've got Okinawa and it's there practicing its own martial art, uh, nothing to do with the Japanese. And then in about 1609 or early 1600s, uh, one of the provinces of Japan occupy um, Okinawa and of course then it becomes heavily influenced by the Japanese, they're, they're you know run by the Japanese, they're under Japanese occupation. So then you've got hundreds of years of this martial art being taught master to student. Now we have to remember that back in the days there weren't massive karate organizations and probably this was underground or very closed off master student teaching one-on-one. -on -one. Um, right up until the end of the samurai period and what you've got to remember is that karate still isn't called karate it's just te or uh, you've got a different form of karate and different kanji used and uh, it's not how we know as empty hand it's not that at all and then so the samurai period ends and then very slowly um, Okinawan te which is very Chinese sort of comes into the forefront and from there you in about the early 1900s and I'm gonna say about 1922 ish it starts to really influence Japan so in Okinawa they become they, they start opening schools before the 1900s and around the 1900s and then they do some demonstrations in Japan and the Japanese love it, they absolutely love it. So around the 1920s they start opening schools, start opening academies and all that type of thing and, and they start introducing Japanese, sorry, they start introducing karate to a Japanese syllabus. Now what you've got to remember here is that what happened, this is very important now, what happened is that, and this is not my opinion, this is actually said by some of the founders of karate, they describe this at the end of their books, very popular books you can buy on Amazon written by some of the founders of Japanese karate if you will, and they say that they had to take out um, some of the more deadly things or they had to simplify the moves to teach it en masse. So remember before this 1920s sort of, or 1900s you would get it hand to hand, very Chinese, very more dynamic style of martial art and then in the 1900s they were like right the Japanese got hold of it and said let's teach this en masse to all kids, to massive audiences. You see lines and lines of people learn it. So what they did is they made the moves simpler. They changed Okinawan Te into a very simple form uh, of karate. Now to give you an idea of this, in sort of karate, Japanese if you will, it's very angular, everything is like bang, like that. But in 
the, the sort of older versions, you get a much more Chinese hand. It's, I'm going to call it the Chinese hand line. So Japan is very much at the 45 five degree angle. Get it simplified. The Chinese is that when they change it to Okinawan Te, you get that sort of move. Of course, this goes throughout all the different moves in karate, which what I'm trying to get across to you is that from this block move, bang, you get a more of this movement coming in. And what that means is that it was changed in Japan and it was only changed in the 1900s. So this idea that of people learning karate and they're learning an ancient tradition, you're actually learning. Now, I don't want to use the word simplified, but it is simplified because uh, there are some very mean karate fighters out there, some excellent guys, and I'm not saying it doesn't work. But what I'm saying is something was lost from karate. Like, for example, in one of the earlier shows, come on, you've got this move, but uh, actually in the Oki uh, sorry, the Okinawan earlier version, you've got a lot of the, the movements come up through this and move, and it's about breaking out. And I can't, to be honest, I can't remember exactly what that one's about. I've got, a, I don't really know anything about karate. I have um, met a gentleman who's part of uh, the Babishi line, and he does it very much of the Chinese style, and it's much more different um, to what you would expect, which is it looks very Chinese. So, uh, and he was explaining, showing me that the moves are much, whereas in Japanese karate they do this, they become much more um, fluid and dynamic in the Chinese version of Te. So, that being said, uh, what I want to do is show you now, if you're unaware, the Babishi is actually one of the earliest karate documents, if not the earliest karate document. And uh, this is done by McCarthy. I'm not going to... Um, slag this off in any way, I think it's worth buying, but you have to remember that McCarthy has not been given the tradition uh, that was passed down, so there's lots of things that are not really understood, if you will, uh, but it still makes it a great book, because, you know, we wouldn't have it without his translation, but there are lots of, like, at the end, there are lots of techniques that have been passed down, and, um, you know, they're, they're excellent, but he doesn't quite show it in the book. So if you look, want to look at a original style karate, you get a very, sorry, yeah, original style karate, you get a very Chinese feel to it. It's got lots of Chinese movement, and it's only later that it becomes this solid Japanese force. So if I'm going to leave you there, what I want to leave you with is the idea that um, karate is not Japanese. It only came in the 20th century to Japan uh, on whole, en masse. Um, which means, you know, this idea was ancient Japanese karate was not true. They didn't even know about it in Japan. And the karate you think you're, you know, you, when you see lots of striking, strong stances, white geese with black belts and very angular features, that is a, a modern version of the old. And when I say modern, really modern, like 1920s and early 1900s. So it didn't even go back to samurai times. So when you're thinking of karate, it's excellent. You've got some great karate practitioners. There are two definite streams. You've got the Japanese simplified karate and the original Okinawan and Tei there, which are definitely have a, a, a divergence and a difference. And when you're talking to people about karate, please don't say it's Japanese. Make sure you say it's Okinawan. And it comes from Okinawa before the Japanese ever took it. So thanks for listening to that, guys. I hope uh, you've got more information than I have. Please put it in the links below if you know more than I do, which is probably obvious. There's lots and lots of things that can be discussed there, and mine was just a quick overview. However, if you are interested in the martial arts or the military arts of Japan, then uh, I wrote this book, which is um, Samurai War Stories, and this is a translation of uh, some 1600s documents, which tells you how a soldier actually learned to be a soldier and if you like martial arts we did this which is an illustrated guide to the Viking martial arts and in that we discussed uh, the Viking sagas and we looked at the sagas and what they actually said about warfare and military sorry about uh, martial training there so I'll leave you that my name is Anthony Cummins you can come and follow us on Facebook um, I, my goal is to correct Japanese martial history and I hope you join me and help me do that